Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, I didn't really tweak the video quality beforehand or anything, but um, yeah, it's actually after midnight, so I'm technically recording on Tuesday. Mm. But uh, I imagine you record. As you may have noticed, Mackenzie isn't here, which kind of sucks because it's a lot funnier when she's recording with me. But she goes to bed a lot earlier than me, and um, we both kind of had a really busy week, and so she refused to come out and vlog and wanted to go to sleep instead. So I'm just talking here by myself. Um, I just got through watching all the videos. Um, Hannah, um, I would give you a hug if I could, but I can't. So uh, I'm really sorry your week has been so bad, and I really hope this week is looking up for you. But um, let's see. On to the one and only challenge, reading something from one of your favorite books. Um, I have a lot of favorite books, like, I've got, I've got a, see that, there's a bookshelf over there, you can kind of see it, um, it's, it's the thing in the very farthest, far end of the corner, um, basically almost every book in there, not, not literally every, more than half of the books in there are my, in my, are in my favorite books, I would say, I have a lot of books I like, because I only really read books in the first place that I'm pretty likely to like a lot, um, I probably got at least 20 that I could say were my favorite books. But one of my favorite books is Second Edition Starting Tr Strength Basic Barbell Training with Mark Ripto and I think it's Ion Kilgore. It could be Lon, Leon, Lon, Kilgore. It's, oh, it's L O N, Lon, Lion, Kilgore. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. I've actually, not sure. I have no idea how to pronounce his game. So I'm actually going to be quoting a quote because there's this quote in the front of the book. And the book, you know, overall is one of my favorite books. It's a great book. Um, <laughs> really, I, I like reading this book. It's got it's really inf good, really good, in really informational. Um, it actually spends enough time um, explaining each exercise because it's really hard to properly explain and, and show people how to do an exercise, especially a barbell a weight training exercise because they're complicated and hard to get right. Um, it's sport for a reason. It's not just like you know something. It's like it's not like just doing ten push-ups randomly. Although doing push-ups properly is actually pretty hard. But no, not a lot of people do it right. But um, it takes a full chapter. It's let's see, uh, this book has like um, almost three hundred pages, and it takes a full chapter for each of the each of the three four. The uh, yeah four exercises covered in here. It takes. A, large chapter for each one of them, and that's the way it should be done, and it's actually pretty, you know, not boring to read, interesting, it's got lots of picture diagrams and stuff, you know, maybe I'll show something random and cool, and cool, where's something random and interesting from here? Look, here you've got, like, some, oh, that's a lot of glare, muscle groups and examples of how the power clean could be useful in football. I think it's the, no, it's the press. It's, oh, there's five. I was wrong. There must be at least five exercises that they cover here. Anyway, so the quote I'm going to be reading from here is a quote there in the front of the book. Um, it's by Robert Heinlein. I actually know who Robert Heinlein was, but his name sounds familiar all the time. I should really check him up on Wikipedia. All right, so a human being should be able to change a diaper, plan an invasion, butcher a hog, con a ship, design a building, write a sonnet, balance accounts, build a wall, set a bone, come for the dying, take orders, give orders, cooperate, act alone, solve equations, analyze a new problem, pitch manure, program a computer, cook a tasty meal, fight efficiently, and die gallantly. Specialization is for insects. Robert Heinlein. It's pretty cool. Um, I have some other favorite quotes that I didn't really think would be long enough and from one of my favorite books either. Um, but, you know, uh, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, Martin Luther King Jr. And what was my other one that I really like? Oh, not a quote, an acronym. HOPE, H-O-P-E, period after each one, helping other people every day, which is pretty cool. Um, there's a lot less to talk about than usual because, one, I don't have Mackenzie to goof around with, and two, there are no questions this week. I mean, I spent a bunch of time on this, but... Oh. All right, so... Given that, what's that? Oh, right. I'll answer my own question, and I'll ask my own question, and then answer that one in the same week. Since I've got a good, what have I got? Like, I've got like six minutes left. Um, anyway, so my question last week was what's something you like to teach to other people or share with other people? 
So I'm going to list three things instead of one. Um, but I won't go into them that much. I mean, I already kind of showed you one of them. See this? Starting strength. Basic barbell training. I don't actually teach, I haven't actually taught anyone basic barbell training. I've just taught my sister some of the basics one time when I got to drag her into the gym with me. But I really do like to teach people about health and fitness because that's really interesting to me. And um, I know a lot about it because of that. You know, and since I'm you know, an awesome unschooler, I've had a lot of time to learn about it. Anyway. Um, also, used to, I used to look like this all the time. Um, and I can't really even make my face look like that anymore, which is awesome. Thanks to, you know, eating and living healthy and getting exercise. So, um, if you want to, if you want some, like, um, diet or exercise advice, talk to me. I know quite a bit, but, you know, not a professional. Uh, my video is lagging up now, so I'm just kind of waiting. All right, hopefully it's not going to have some horrible thing in the middle there because it lagged a bit. But, um, yeah, I'm not a professional, although you never know, I could suddenly change career tracks and go do that instead, but I know a lot. Anyway, other two things are, I kind of like, I'm kind of interested in, I guess, I'm not teaching hope, but practicing hope, helping other people every day. Um, there's this really cool guy who I've gotten to meet twice, ever, but his name is Jeremy, and um, I can't really remember if he has, he has a lot, of course he has a last name, I don't know what his last name is. Anyway, he's this really cool guy, and um, and he calls himself a hope dealer, and uh, that's his like job title because he's self-employed as something similar to a motivational speaker. And I do Friday Night Live mentoring, which is a volunteer program in California, which um, may not exist after this year, but um, the school year, so after this summer, it might not exist anymore, which kind of sucks. But um, it's uh, basically mentoring, as in being a role model and friend to younger kids. And um, because for mentoring, I've gotten to go to two events, which he was at, and um, he's really cool and very good. I mean, you've got those motivational speakers like this. I went to this thing called Reach for the Future Contrast, and this one guy was a motivational speaker, goes up on stage, talks to people, leaves, right? Um, it's kind of entertaining, not as much as a comedian. He didn't really get his point across, whatever it was. I don't remember anything about him, actually. Um, except he had a suit, and uh, he was funny. That's it. That's all I remember about him. Jeremy, though, I remember quite a lot about him, and a good number of the things he taught me and a bunch of other, the other kids that were there, and some of the stories he told, etc. Um, and I guess I can't really say why, but I guess that makes him a significantly better teacher, and um, he's definitely motivated me, which also makes him a better motivational speaker, I suppose. Um, I guess I can't really convey any of it in this video. I'm hoping to maybe do a workshop on it at camp if I can um, put it into something I can do a workshop in. I mean, he certainly managed to. I don't know if I can. But, yeah, I think a lot of it's about learning to talk to other people and understand people, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's the second thing. Wow, I've almost sucked up all my time already. I haven't even gotten to the next question. The third thing would be music. I mean, yeah, I'm a musician. I like sharing my music with people. I like to show off my music, especially when songs I'm good at. Although, so far at camp, I've only played songs I'm bad at playing. Anyway, um, for the talent show, as you have been there know. Um, so the next thing I was going to ask all everyone is, um, what does like how important is camp to you what does camp mean to you um that's i guess it's a two-in-one question and it's not really the same thing but answer both of those things so what does camp mean to you and how important is it to you um or has it been in the past because i know there's we've got at least three people who aren't going to camp anymore and emily isn't going to get to go this year which really sucks um and I know it's it's definitely been really important for me. I've only got 50 seconds to talk about it now. I guess I should have left myself more time. But, I mean, I can think back on, like, what kind of a person I was before I came to camp the first time. And it's not like I was a bad guy, but I was shy, introverted, boring, um, totally not, uh, not comfortable at all with physical contact, hugging people, that kind of thing. Didn't even like to do it. Um so many other things that have changed about me since then. In large part, it's either either because of camp, or because of the people I have met at camp, or because of the things that being at camp and meeting those people has have inspired me to do. Um, and... Oh, I do not think I would enjoy, I would like my life all that much if I hadn't been to camp. 
So, yeah. <laughs>